Welcome back to What's Now, turning our attention to your health. CMV causes birth defects in babies. This is a very concerning condition that can be prevented sometimes. Recently spoke with the VP of Medical Affairs at Moderna, as well as a patient advocate, all about CMV and what you need to know. Let's take a look. CMV is the number one infectious cause of birth defects in the U.S., yet 91% of women have never even heard of it. It's called CMV, a viral infection that presents symptoms in adults much like a common cold. For most people, it does not pose a health risk, but for some, like people who have a weakened immune system or newborns, CMV could have serious consequences. In fact, nearly one in three children in the U.S. are infected with CMV by age five. And June is CMV Awareness Month. Here to discuss this virus and what is being done to prevent it are Dr. Allison August, MD, and VP of Clinical Development of Moderna, as well as parent advocate Laura Sweet with the National CMV Foundation. Thank you both of you for being here today. Thank you so much for the opportunity and for taking the time to learn a little bit more about CMV and the Moderna efforts on a CMV vaccine. And Dr. August, tell us a little bit more about what exactly CMV stands for and about the virus, its symptoms, and who it impacts. So CMV stands for cytomegalovirus, and CMV is a very common virus and highly contagious. So we know that more than 50% of adults in the United States by the age of 40 have been infected with CMV. But as you said, for most folks, the symptoms are just similar to a common cold. But for certain individuals, folks who have a slight immune suppression or pregnant women, it can pose much more serious long-term health consequences. In pregnant women, if a pregnant woman is infected with CMV when she's pregnant, she has a risk of transmitting the CMV to her developing baby. And that can yield much more serious long-term health consequences, including uh, uh, impact on a brain and brain development, blindness, hearing loss, and learning disabilities and other uh, developmental delays. But as you said, 91% of women have never heard of CMV, yet every 30 minutes, a baby is born infected with CMV in the United States. So that's one in 200. And of those, one in five indeed go on to develop these long-term consequences that I just described. There are certain communities that are disproportionately affected by CMV. So communities of color, or communities of lower socioeconomic status. We know that if you're a baby, a child born into those communities, you have twice the risk of getting infected with CMV as compared with other communities. Ms. Sweet, can you tell us how CMV has personally impacted your family and what we need to know about CMV? Yeah, so like most people, I had never heard of CMV and had no idea that I contracted it while I was pregnant um, with my daughter, who is now seven. Um, she's amazing. Um, and she was um, born with congenital CMV, is deaf as a result, has had cochlear implant surgeries and uses those devices to hear. Uh, the virus also caused damage to her brain and um, one of her eyes, um, but she had wonderful early intervention services um, and worked really hard, um, you know, every step of the way and is, is doing incredibly well now. Um, and I think everyone should know just how common it is, um, that it can seriously affect babies and that there are some really simple ways to help um, prevent and reduce risk. So I had um, risk factors when I was pregnant. I had a toddler in daycare full time um, and no one mentioned CMV or, or simple things um, that I could be doing like um, hand washing, um, avoiding contact with um, you know, saliva, not sharing food and drinks um, with young children. So education is just critical. Um, the more people are educated, um, the more we can um, reduce transmission. Dr. August, what is being done to help keep this virus in check? And can you tell us about current research for a vaccine for CMV? Well, there, Moderna has two parallel uh, efforts 
One is in education and educating the public and healthcare providers. There's an excellent resource, uh, a website, nowiknowcmv.com. And in parallel, we do have a CMV vaccine candidate, which is in phase three clinical trial now and is ongoing. And for folks who would like to learn more about that trial, there's again another excellent resource, which is cmvictory.com. Again, dedicated to information about our ongoing CMV vaccine clinical trial. Miss Lee, what's something you would tell other parents who aren't familiar with CMV? Um, I think, you know, to, to get the facts, to get more information, to ask your healthcare providers about it um, and know there are other, you know, resources like the National CMV Foundation um, that provides lots of information and support um, online. They were an invaluable resource to me and my family and many others throughout our journey. And where can we get our questions answered about the virus online and find good information about this? I think the best resource is the website nowiknowcmv.com. Thank you so much, Dr. August and Laura Sweet, for joining us today. I really appreciate this important information from you, Dr. August. And Laura, thank you so much for sharing your personal information and also your personal journey with us. And we wish your daughter all the luck in the world. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.